Hey everybody. Well, I'm back home and it's nice. It's only 28 degrees here instead of 16 degrees. <laughs> and uh, I'll show a couple of pictures here or a short video clips. Um, I don't have any sound for them right now, but this is what I was attempting earlier this morning in downtown Portland to do a little video down on the city streets before breakfast. Well, it just got a little loopy. The people that were out, um, you know, some were singing uh, very loudly and uh, there is, you know, a few loud vehicles. And when you're in the middle of a downtown area with all those tall buildings, you know, any vehicle just gets so loud. And so I don't have anything but my iPhone with me. I didn't have a separate uh, microphone or a wireless that was closer. So the audio wasn't very good. So you can see a couple of video clips there. And uh, I tried, but I waited till I got home to uh, let you know how my weekend went. Hey, I also wanted to talk about uh, the ruminant animals. People are asking me, Joel, can I, can I broaden what I eat? You know, I'm a hunter, I like this, what should I eat? So on and so forth. So the carnivore lifestyle really is about ruminant animals. You're not limited to just cattle, right? You're gonna hear the term, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs a lot. That's kind of a balanced nutritional value. Uh, according to a variety of doctors, that was kind of led between Dr. Ken Berry and Dr. Sean Baker. Both those guys, um, I think more so Ken Berry now, the BBBE, um, he was keto and then transitioned into carnivore. Whereas I think Dr. Sean Baker just started carnivore, I don't remember, nine years ago, 11 years ago or something. So January is National Carnivore Month. And again, I think that was all from Dr. Sean Baker, which is cool, I, I like it. So what can you eat? So the intent behind it is you're gonna eat an herbivore, a ruminant animal. I found my digestion is better on a carnivore diet. I'm not kidding. There's a lot of benefits, and that is probably one of the biggest ones. Um, no constipation, uh, anything like that. I, everything is just nice and easy, and uh, life is good. So, um, ruminant animals. So you have cattle, you're gonna have sheep, goats, then you're gonna have deer, moose, elk, You'll have buffalo and bison. They are not the same. Buffalo is more of a warmer weather animal. Bison are more uh, North American, very cold, uh, uh, colder weather animals, right? We'll see probably more bison meat than uh, than buffalo, I would imagine, well, at least what I have. But um, and then uh, antelope. Antelope is actually very good. And let's see, I think it's cam camels and giraffes are the last two of the most common. There's probably more, to be honest with you, but those are kind of the, um, the most commonly talked about. Antelope is very good. I've had that. Bison and, of course, lamb. So you have sheep, right? When they're younger, typically people will say, hey, this is lamb, and then the older animal um, is, is mutton, right? But typically when you... It's just always called lamb, right? And then uh, uh, those tend to be a little gamier. So elk, moose, lamb, a little gamier. It's almost like a, if you go into the seafood world, you know, salmon, most people like salmon. Oh, this is so delicious. Nice fatty fish, really good. But if they have mackerel or some tuna or maybe like a yellowfin tuna or something, it's a little bit more oceanic taste more of the sea, right? Um, sturgeons that way as well. You could, it's it's a, a gamier fish. It's not really gamey, but uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, right? Anyway, so that's kind of the same thing, right? There's some that, that taste more neutral, um, and cattle tend to be really common, nice, rich tasting meat, just delicious. So I, I tend to lead with cattle, right? In New York, so like a strip loin, you can buy a bulk strip loin to save some money. Costco has them. So they're, you know, nine, 10 bucks a pound, I think on average. But if you go and just buy a cut, a slice of, you know, like a, a pound New York strip, you're gonna pay 16, 18, 20 bucks. 
right? If it's already trimmed, all the fat's trimmed off, so on and so forth. So if you buy a strip loin, you can cut that up and you're good to go. And trim the fat, however much fat you want to trim, and render that later with other meals. You could actually put some of that fat in if you have some scrambled eggs or whatever. It's all so good. <laughs> so the more you try, the more excited that you'll get about this and you'll go, I don't have to give up anything. What's the problem? Brussels sprout, did you say? No, I don't hear anything about Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I've had more uh, constipation issues around fibrous diets. Um, and there's some great information I will try and find it. I'll post it probably in a later video, but there's great information about people that have um, a colostomy bag. It's an unfortunate thing, right? But if they've had a section of their intestines removed, they have a colostomy bag, some of the harder things that come out that they eat are fibrous material, right? And that tends to get a little more backed up. And if people eat steak, it it just doesn't build up in that colostomy bag. I know it's a little gross to talk about. It's a very unfortunate thing um, for people, but it's it's a real life thing to talk about. And so people that have leaned, it's just, this is, I've read this all over the place. It's really common. People that have leaned towards the carnivore way of life um, have less constipation issues and less backed up from too much fiber. So, um, and again, I am not a doctor. I'm, I, you know, I'm not in any way affiliated with any medical organization. I've been doing this carnivore off and on since 2021, right? So three years and I've lost 61 pounds. I gained 29 back, which is why I'm doing these daily diaries to hold myself accountable. And those of you that are helping me hold me accountable, it's great. So, so there's a lot of truth to that when you're going to transition and you're like, well, I've only had fish and veggies or chicken and veggies. What's with all this red meat? Uh, it's delicious. <laughs> and my digestion has been so much better. Um, uh, again, when I used Judy Cho in another one of my videos, I mentioned the carnivore cure. It's an elimination diet. A lot of little pock marks and rashes that was on my head, um, my face, my arms. Um, my legs used to itch at night, you know? I'd get into bed and slightly itch. It wasn't really bad, but it was just annoying. Well, I stopped eating greens, spinach, spinach. I turned out I was allergic to spinach and, um, and high volumes of sugar. If you have a lot of sugar, um, I had reactions to that. So I gave that stuff up, not overnight. It was a big transition. But when I gave that stuff up and really went, you know, full on carnivore, my gosh, I can't even tell you, you know, it's, you just feel better. I'm more awake, more alert in the afternoons. My, just my demeanor is just smooth throughout the day. I'm not overly hungry, nor am I, you know, overly full. I eat until I'm satisfied and comfortable and that's it. And then if I'm hungry, there's great carnivore, carnivore snacks. There's lots of carnivore beef sticks. Um, you can have pork rinds, things like that as well, that are great fatty snacks. That's a little more information about, uh, is it safe? Can I do this? Should I eat a variety of meat or just eat a cow? Well, now that you know, it's really about ruminant animals. And that's a lot. There's a lot just with, you know, cattle, lamb, and elk, just those three alone. It's uh, such a vast difference in flavor, but, uh, but yeah, bi bison's yeah, amazing. I really like that too. So, um, and try some antelope. So there you go. I won't uh, take this any longer. I appreciate your time. Uh, great to see everybody. Uh, here is a picture of what I had. Bing. I had a couple of eight ounce steaks and I had some bacon. <laughs> That's what I was hungry for. And uh, then I had my liquid death. As a matter of fact, in my truck here, I have liquid death right now. <laughs> Again, folks, it's just 
sparkling water. It's not an energy drink or anything like that. They have flavored ones that uh, they're not very good, I'll be honest. There's other flavor, flavored waters. I think it's like LaCroix and things that may taste better, but I don't know about the sugar content on those. And I just don't want to put anything. When I'm going full carnivore, I drink sparkling water or plain water because I don't want a flavor in there. Even it has no sugar. It's just these fruit essence or whatever they're calling it. It reminds me of sugar. And then I think about other sugary things. Oh, this is watermelon water. Whoa. And then I start kind of craving actual watermelon or other sugary sweet. I just don't do it. If I don't have anything sweet, then I don't crave it, honestly. So that's my advice just plain sparkling water or water. But if you have better control than me <laughs> and you want to drink berry water or watermelon water or whatever flavor or essence they have, <laughs> uh, go for it. I, I think that's, that's just fine. Just no sugar. That's what you don't want, right? So, uh, so there you go. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me today. So now you're going to love the ruminant animal. Hey, <laughs> all right. I'll uh, catch up with you tomorrow, the 15th day of the month. We're halfway through, folks. And uh, see, you really can do this. All right. Catch you later. Bye.